it's time to talk about collisions. Are you ready? Then let's. So collisions inside of GameMaker allow us to have objects actually collide with each other. But to do that, we need another object. So I've returned to opengameart.org, and what we're going to look for is spikes, S-P-I-K-E-S. Now, I'm also going to have available all of the assets I'm using to download from the link below. It's in the first video. I'll link it here and there as well, but you can find that and just download them all in one place. I'm doing it this way to show you where I got it from and contribute the authors who made some of these assets or who made all the assets because they deserve some credit as well. So look for spikes on open game art. If you just search for spike, you will not find it unless you go to the second page. What we're looking for is this one right here. Bouvelin or Bavulian, I, I don't know. But this is a set of four spikes and it's made by the same people who made our Flappy Bird, so it works out really great. So I'm gonna click on the file, download it, open it up, and then we're going to extract it. Extract all, and there we go. So transparent PNG is the only option it has here, and so now let's go ahead and return to our game. This is where we left off. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to make another group to keep ourselves organized. So under sprites, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say create group, which is down here. It's not under the main create thing, it's down further, uh, right under the delete and it says create group. Now I'm gonna call this spikes and for ease of clarity, and actually let me put it just on coding here because you might not be able to see this. So we made a group called spikes. When you create it, it's right down here. And I'm gonna right click on spikes and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a color of red. That way we can easily see it, it stands out and because these are obstacles, things that we're gonna avoid, red just kind of makes sense. Now, what we're gonna do is bring up the spikes we've got and I'm gonna drag all four of these at once. So select them all and I'm gonna drag them just into GameMaker and it's gonna create four sprites for us. And they will be named exactly the file name. So it's gonna be spike A, B, C, and D. And then I'm gonna come over to, I'm gonna do this so I can kind of scroll down. So I'm gonna come over to our asset browser and I'm gonna select all four spikes. So I click the first one, I hold shift, and then I click the last one and it selects everything in between. And then I'm gonna drag those into our spikes folder. And then I can minimize that, and there we go. Now, for spike A, you can follow my exact naming convention, but I kinda just made this off the top of my head. It's not that important. But I do want to differentiate them and make sure that I call them sprites. So this one's gonna be SPR large spikes. Then spike B is gonna be SPR medium spikes. Spike C is going to be SPR single, or no, it's not a single spike. It's the small spikes. And then this one, spike D, is SPR single spike. You ever say a word or type a word so much that it doesn't sound real anymore? That's what's happening with the word spike right now. Okay, now let's go and make an object. We're going to go create object and we're gonna call this OBJ spike. Now, what we're gonna do is only make one object. The reason for this is we can just create one and then change which sprite is associated with it and the collisions will still work the same because the collision mask, which is what we're gonna talk about next, we actually set up in the sprite itself. So if we change the sprite on an object, that collision mask will still work accordingly. So instead of having to have four different spikes and then it gets a little difficult when you have to make them and so on and so forth, we can have one object. This is very scalable, which just means that we can grow the game if we wanted to. If we were creating an individual spike for every unique sprite of spike that we had, four is fine, it's doable, it's manageable. 
But if we had a hundred, if we had a thousand different kinds of obstacles in our game, no longer. That's just ridiculous. So having it just be spike sprites with one object, we can scale this up as large as we want. When, and when we get to that, I'll show you what I mean really by scalable inside of our code. But for now, it just means that we only have one object to worry about and just one set of code. So in our spike, let's go ahead and make sure we set our spike sprite. I'm just gonna choose the single spike. It really doesn't matter. I'm gonna go into our room and I'm going to drag that spike. And what I'm gonna do is for now, I'm gonna put it right underneath our bird. The other thing that we should do though, is every time we bring in our sprites is we need to make sure we set the origin. And on these ones, it is going to be different because we are actually going to create these spikes in our game as the game is playing. It's an infinite runner essentially. And so we want to create these spikes, but we don't want to create them and have the spikes be right here like this in the middle. We want them to be bottom center. So when we get created, this will be right on the bottom or right on the top of our level. So let's go through and change middle center to bottom center on each of these. There we go. Now let's go back up to the first one. And I'm going to press F12. I'm going to open this up a little bit. So this center fit button right here will fit the sprite to the full screen of what you scale it up to. And then I'm going to tick this collision mask. So this right now is the collision mask that Game Maker is using. That means that if our bird touches any part of this dark gray area, it will sense a collision and it will activate the code that we tell it to. Now, that's not ideal when it comes to images that have a lot of transparency inside of them because Game Maker by default checks that as a collision. But we know as we're playing, the transparent part should not be a collision. It doesn't make any sense for us to run into this area of the spike and die. So what we can do is take over from the automatic collision mask, which as you can see over here, the mode is automatic and we could change it to full image, which would do the same thing and that's definitely not what we want. We could change it to manual and we could come in here and we could actually drag these around and set it manually, which is closer to what we want, but not ideal still because the type is a rectangle. Now we could check it with rectangle with rotation, although that's not really what we want either. We could change it to an ellipse which would be great if it was an ellipse, but it's not. We could change it to a diamond. That's not what we want. We could change it to precise slow. And this one is getting closer. Now, what it means by slow is that it's going to take more processing power for Game Maker to know exactly where this collision mask is at compared to, say, the rectangle. It takes more power for Game Maker to keep track of this, especially if we were to go to precise per frame, then we could actually change the collision mask every single frame that the sprite is on the screen. And that's what we're going to do for the bird in a second. But for this one, we can just do precise. Now, precise and manual, that's not the combination we want. We actually do want to go back to automatic. And when we check precise, you can see now that the dark gray area is only around the actual parts of the sprite that makes sense for us to collide with. And this is exactly what we're looking for. So we're going to go into each one of these and change that. Leave it on automatic, change it to precise. Go over here, open collision mask, change the type to precise. And the last one, collision mask, type, precise. And there we go. So that is the collision masks for our spikes. Now let's open up our Cyclops bird and take a look at its collision mask because it is going to be a little different. So if we open this up and we press play, the collision mask stays on the bird exactly where it is. It is a rectangle and it's automatic. Now, we want it to be actually precise. So we can leave it on automatic and change it to precise, but you'll see here that because our wing actually flaps up in the beginning here, 
it records that as a spot that could have a collision. Now in this specific scenario, it's not that important. This is a tiny, tiny area of a fairly large sprite and it'd be almost impossible to actually collide with that in our game. But the point still stands that it could and if we were making a different game with different sprites or a larger sprite that really moved around, that could cause a serious issue. So instead we're gonna do precise per frame. And now you see that every single frame has been mapped out by GameMaker specifically. Now, depending on how you feel about this game and the difficulty you want to have, maybe it would actually be better to go to manual and do an ellipse. Because if you wanted your game to be a little bit, let's say, easier, you could set the collision mask to here. And this is suddenly going to feel really, really fair to the player because you'll actually have a lot of generosity where you're not actually colliding with it if you touch it with your tail or your feather or your uh, hairdo on the bird here. So this will feel a lot more fair. As a programmer, we'll know that it's not, but a big part of the game is actually making it feel fair. Now I am gonna keep mine automatic precise per frame. But as the developer and the designer here, you get to decide exactly how you want this to play out. But that's our collision mask and how you set them inside of here. Now let's go to our OBJ Cyclops object. So an important thing to note here is that by default, you have a collision mask that is the same as your sprite. But if we click on this, we can actually change that. So if we wanted to change this to a different one, like we wanted to have our Cyclops bird have the collision mask of our spikes, you absolutely can do that. There are times you might want to do this. This is not one of them, but you could. So keep that in mind. Then we're gonna go in and add a new event. So I'm gonna click on add event and come down here and we have a collision event. Now we have a group of objects, so we have to hover over that, and then it reveals the Cyclops and the spike. So this is an event that will trigger when two objects collide. You can have it with the Cyclops, or you can have it with the spikes. We want it with the spikes. So we're just gonna call this game over. And when we collide with a spike, we're gonna say the game is done. There is a function, called game restart that will just restart the game from the beginning and you're ready to go. Now there are a few things that this does not actually restart, but for what we're gonna be doing, we don't need to worry about that because we're not gonna be using the built-in variable score, which is one of the things that doesn't get reset. So don't worry about that. I'm just mentioning it because it's something I actually learned recently and thought I would share. So game restart will restart the game. Pretty simple function. Now, I'm gonna move the spike down here because it changed as we changed the origin. And we have our bird. I'm gonna put him up top. And now I'm gonna run the game. Once we touch that spike, the game will restart. So we should be in an infinite loop. There we go. Now we can actually jump, so we can. I guess we can stop the loop. But it's doing exactly what we want it to. So I'm gonna move the spike over a smidgen and try running the game again. And now let's see you can see that we get all the way down in the spike. So that transparent area, that is not being detected by GameMaker, and this is working as expected. Now, the last thing I wanna do is set up our spike so that it actually moves in our level, because right now, it just stands right st still. That's, that's, that's lame. So instead, I'm gonna move the spike over here, and we're gonna go over to the spike object. And to move this, we're just gonna add a step event. So step, step, and we'll just say move. And we just want this to move to the left. So I'm just gonna say X, which is the X coordinate for horizontal, minus equals 3.5. So this is a number that I have specifically set. We're gonna do a background later on and the background speed of the ground will move at 3.5. So if you change the speed to be faster or slower, just know you'll need to adjust it so that the ground moves at the same speed, otherwise it's gonna look a little weird.
So with that one line of code, the spike is now going to move. And that is the beginning of our Flappy Bird game. So it's not much to look at, but you could, if you wanted to kind of cheat and do this all by hand, which is not something you can actually do for an infinite game, but we could come in here and we could place more spikes. I'm placing more spikes by holding the Alt key with the OBJ spike selected, and you can place down more spikes. Now, if I put a few like this, I can then actually rotate them with this going up to the top here, and you can see that it rotates along that origin, which is bottom left. If you hold shift as you rotate something, it will lock it to, I think, like 15 degree intervals. So that's what we want to do to then be able to put it up top. So then we'll rotate this one. And here we go. Now, this is the beginning of a fairly interesting and challenging game. So actually, I don't even know. This is going to be pretty tough. Oof. Yeah. I don't know if that's doable. Oh, man. Maybe I'm just really bad at this. But one of the things we'll do is make sure that the spikes are not too close together. Otherwise, it becomes almost impossible to do. Oh, I thought I had that one. Okay. Okay. I'm hitting like the little feather on the bottom of my bird. Mm, whatever. Whatever. The point is, you can start placing these spikes in your game, moving them along, and you've got what is essentially a game that you can play. Now, it's at the bare bones, there's not a lot here, and there's a whole lot more that we're gonna do to make this fun and introduce more concepts, but you can see just how quickly you can get a prototype of a game up and running, and it's super important once you start making your own games to get that prototype, okay? When you start making a game, you can have these lofty, grand ideas, but if you don't get a prototype out there and you don't actually figure out it's fun, it's all for naught. If people don't enjoy playing your game, they're not going to play your game. It's just how it goes. So figure out if your game is fun. Make a prototype just like we've done. Get it out there. Have people try it. And if it's a hit, continue on. Otherwise, go back to the drawing board. Scrap the idea. Come up with a new one. Rework your old idea. Do something so your game is actually fun. Okay, just a little piece of advice. Now what we're gonna cover next is getting our game set up to look like this. So we're gonna go from that black background to all of a sudden having a beautiful parallax background and an infinite amount of spikes that are spawned in our game, making it officially an endless runner or endless flyer that we can play forever and ever. So I hope you'll join me then. And as always, keep making, keep learning, and I'll see you in the next video.